Right now on Atlanta Alive, patient zero. I think it will get worse. We now have our first case of the Zika virus in Georgia, but could there be more? Three seconds, dude. Three. I'll pull it out. I'm giving the money. Get it. Come on. Caught on camera, but still on the run. The national search for this violent couple as their trail of terror turns cold. And a consumer alert. Tips for anyone trying to get out of town on spring break and the best ways for you to save some serious cash. This is Atlanta Alive with Vinny Politan. Good morning. Welcome to Atlanta Live. A nice, beautiful morning here in the metro. We've got a 10 on the whizometer on this, the fourth day of February. Fourth day of February. Yes, indeed. We deserve a Somebody's 10. birthday after yeah, yesterday. Somebody. Somebody. Are you a birthday boy? It's Mr. Vinny's birthday. Oh, today. happy birthday, Oh, Vinny. thank you, thank you, thank you. What yeah. are you, 26? No, 35. Yeah, it's getting up there at 35. And you, you can trust the anchor. A, what are you giving him for his birthday? A 10? A 10. A 10. Yeah. 10. What, else, you know, what, a 10. what else do you get there? A 10 on the wasometer. Yeah, we have a few clouds on the outside. No rain to speak of, at least around here. That rain, you have to go well down to the south. That front is still pushing its way further down to the south. And so the central and southern portions of the state will experience the rain, at least for this morning. It will head down toward Florida a little bit later on this afternoon. We have those clouds, but they'll clear out as well as high pressure continues to build in. You can see the effects of that front. Temperatures cooling down. Look at this. 39 degrees right now in Dalton. Blairsville at 38. 42 in Canton. 40 44 degrees right now in Atlanta, 45 in Peachtree City, with some 50s over here toward the southeast. Again, as that front continues to push down, we'll watch these temperatures fall off as well. But we will get that sunshine in for this afternoon. That's the good news. We're looking at uh, 47 degrees by noon. We'll reach a daytime high of 53 degrees. Again, close to where we should be for this time of year. I know you've been spoiled. I know you have. Yes, as we head toward the weekend, we'll take a look at that weekend outlook because there will be a slight changes headed our way and colder next week. How much colder? Enough that you're going to need some winter gear. We'll talk about that coming up. But right now, let's get a check on that traffic out there with Crash and Fred. Thank you so much, Chesley. It's so nice to have all that rain behind us, folks. So let's take a peek at things and see what's up with the early morning. A lot of green. We like that. In fact, I'm we're going to take you all the way up Georgia 400. We'll start you off with one of the big three. There you are. There's Roswell Road over there in case you want an alternate. Not that you need it. Look at that. 65 miles an hour. Take you all the way up towards Milton and say happy birthday, Vinnie Paulton. He lives right there. He's a lawyer, too. Did you all know that? All right, let's swing you back over to come and get you back out of Georgia 400 at Highway 20. It's a speed limit ride, 65 miles an hour, so no troubles on that part of the big three. In fact, 75, 400, and 85 all in the green with a live look from the Sky Tracker 85 at Indian Trail. It's moving so fast, it almost looks like it's frozen. All right, Fred McFarland, take them out to the 20s. I will crash out on the east side. You're looking good. 138, Conyers to 285, about a 12 minute trip. And over on the west side, good morning, Temple, Villa Rica, Winston. Coming into the city, you got a nice ride from Fairburn to 285, a 12-minute trip. Maybe if we give your address, Vinny, people will come by and bring you birthday presents. So we'll <laughs> drop off a truck, <laughs> drop off the back of a truck. There Hopefully you go. Vinny. Thanks so much, Fred. All right, health officials are scrambling this morning to confirm how many people infected with the Zika virus are here in Georgia. This comes hours after the first travel-related case of the mosquito-borne virus popped up here in Georgia. Jennifer Leslie is live at the CDC this morning. And, Jen, what do we know about patient zero? We do know this patient was not pregnant, and that's critical because the symptoms of Zika can be mild or even non-existent in most people, but in pregnant women, it can lead to birth defects. Georgia's first case involves someone who traveled to Columbia between the end of December and the 1st of January and has since made a full recovery. We've also learned the CDC is doing specimen tests from several other Georgia residents with a history of travel to the Americas, where Zika has been declared a health emergency. There is no vaccine to guard against the virus, but the University of Georgia just announced it's partnering with GeoVax Labs to develop one. You need to have one that's a single shot vaccine. I mean, you don't want to have to prime and boost people because it's difficult for them to come back to the clinic. And so the GeoVax approach, along with our immunogens, is, um, will be very effective at a single shot vaccine. Ted Ross of UGA went on to say it usually takes seven to 10 years to develop a vaccine like this, but because this virus is considered an emergency, the CDC will allow for fast tracking, but still, Vinny, it could be two to five years before this is ready. All right. Thanks so much, Jen. Right now at 11live.com and inside our mobile app, we have the top five things you need to know about Zika. Right now, a creepy case out of Buckhead where police are looking for a man who broke into an apartment, climbed into bed with a young girl, and groped her. 
The alleged assault happened Monday at the 3200 Lennox Apartments. Police say the suspect also stole a cell phone and some cash. Investigators have very little to go on because the young girl didn't get a good look at the suspect. All right, who are they and where are they? The intense search continues at this hour for the couple many online are calling the modern day Bonnie and Clyde. And now new video of the couple accused of robbing and kidnapping victims across the southeast. Jennifer Bellamy is live with the latest. And uh, Jennifer, they were last seen in Georgia. Any new sightings now? Not that we know of right now, Vinny, but we are getting a more full picture of Blake Fitzgerald and Brittany Harper from police and about the crimes that they allege they have committed. Take a look at this new security video that police say shows the beginning of their crime spree. Three seconds, dude. Three. I'll pull it out. I'll give you the money. Get it. Come on. Police say that happened at the Microtel in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. They say it shows Blake Fitzgerald trying to convince the clerk he has a gun before the exchange that you just heard. Now, officers say Blake and um, Brittany stole the clerk's, cl clerk's car and drove with him to another neighborhood. They let the clerk go later and entered a family's home during breakfast before. And then they stole their 2010 Silver Ford Edge and forced the wife to go with them. But they later let her go as well. They are still believed to be traveling in that Silver Ford Edge. Police right now say that all happened before the incident that reported armed robbery and kidnapping in Perry, Georgia. The FBI and U.S. Marshals investigating along with local law enforcement agencies and a $10,000 reward being offered for their capture. Vinny? All right, extremely dangerous. Uh, thanks so much, Jennifer. You can share the suspect's photos. We have them up on our Facebook page. Thanks, Jennifer. We're expected to learn more details today about a disturbing case of animal hoarding in Forsyth County. A sheriff's deputy discovered 27 dogs inside a mobile home on Goldmine Road in Cumming. Officials say one of the dogs was already dead when they arrived. The remaining dogs were taken to the animal shelter. The sheriff's office says charges are pending against the homeowner. New Orleans District Attorney has still yet to comment to us after dismissing the case against an Athens man who spent more than a month in jail for a crime he didn't commit. Everybody else can finally see what we've been telling them, what, what we tried telling them a hundred times in the very beginning. You have the wrong person. It's James Michael Riley was arrested and accused of ripping off an elderly New Orleans woman in 2008. He was arrested and locked up for 42 days despite... A solid alibi. Riley has spent tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees trying to clear his name, but his fight still long from over. For one, his mugshot is always going to exist on the Internet. Not much you can really do about that, right? He can attempt to have his arrest records expunged in Georgia and Louisiana, which should shield it from the public. However, uh, if he's fingerprinted, that will live on a federal database. 508, and we've got a 10, a 10, Chesley. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday to you. Enjoy it. Because uh, we do have a few clouds overhead right now, which is why I'm showing you the radar picture. We don't have any rain coming out of those clouds. In fact, these clouds will break up. They will uh, slide a little bit further down to the south. So even though you're starting off with uh, partly cloudy skies to mostly cloudy skies over here in the east, Athens, Social Circle, down through Edenton, and mostly cloudy skies this morning, even though you're starting off that way, by the end of the day, at least you'll have the sunshine in abundance today. So here's your what to wear forecast. Even though we're going to have the sun, temperatures will be cooler, only in the 50s for highs. In fact, uh, where we should be for this time of year, right around 53 degrees. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to suggest the light coat, at least for today. Uh, again, starting off with temperatures in the 40s, only up to 53. Coat should do you. You may want to unbutton it by this afternoon, especially when you see that sunshine. Psychologically, it'll just feel better. Next couple of days, pretty much the same. You got mostly sunny skies again tomorrow after a 30 degree start. It's going to be a very cold start for your Friday morning. We'll get up to 52 degrees for the high. Then as we head into the weekend, just a few extra clouds moving in. Not going to take too much away from our sunshine. So we'll keep it at 10. 54 degrees will be a high temperature and we hold on to that as we head into Sunday. Changes will come by Monday. Could we be talking about snow in the forecast? Maybe. We'll talk about it coming up. Nice little tease. Nah, 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 nah. Right. <laughs> Here's Crash Clark with a look at the traffic. Did you say s -s 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 snow? Well. I gotta go get bread. <laughs> <laughs> we can joke about that now, but I'll tell you what. 
mean, don't be joking. If all of a sudden it hits. All right, here we go. There's the map, the overall map. That's everything we're looking at right now as far as the perimeter of the metro area. We'll take you right down to Spaghetti Junction. There you are, 85 and 285 coming together in DeKalb County, 64 miles an hour. We'll zoom across that top end perimeter heading westbound all the way over to Georgia, 400, 57 miles an hour. It's going to stay that way across the top end. I don't see any changes right now. In fact, from 85 to 75, 13 minutes, take you 63 miles an hour, turn it around the opposite direction, pretty much the same thing. It's what we call a mirror image. There's a live look. Beautiful shot from the Sky Tracker, 285 at Ashford, Dunwoody. Not a whole lot happening out there, folks. If you're getting ready to get out of the house, enjoy it. Probably the same picture on the south side, Fred yes, McFarland. Yes, indeed. Not a whole lot happening on the south side. 85 northbound, Coweta County. Talking to you guys from Snowy Road to 285, just a six-minute trip. 75, you're looking good. Henry Clayton County, all clear there. And 675 northbound, trying to make that cut from I-75 to that south side perimeter. You've got nothing to stop your ride. It's a nine-minute trip from I-75 to that south side. Vinny. All right, good stuff. Thanks, Fred. Enough is enough. Right now, Commuter Dude is helping homeowners hold the powerful accountable over these crumbling roads. Our promise to the people who use these streets every day coming up. Plus, she's been all about that bass for more than seven decades. We're introducing you to the musician and now world record holder who will start your morning off with a smile. And spring showers uh, bring May flowers and jobs at Home Depot. The company is hiring 80,000 people for its busy season. And they say about half of the temporary workers could get permanent positions. Want to chat with Vinny? Tweet him using hashtag Atlanta Alive. I came in like a All I need is a little Miley Cyrus in my ear. She is a wrecking ball. Okay. All right, some DeKalb County neighbors tell us the resurfacing of their streets is long overdue. And homeowners in the Echo Hill subdivision were encouraged when their badly damaged streets were designated for resurfacing in 2010. And guess what? They're still waiting. Commuter Dude is holding DeKalb County accountable this morning. Dude, is it ever going to happen? 
Vinny, we are watching and we're going to make sure that it happens. We are on Echo Hill Circle right now, a place where you can find very damaged streets. You can find big chunks of asphalt. Neighbors around here tell us it has gotten worse and worse over the five plus years of broken promises. Rain and cold temperatures turn a portion of Echo Hill Circle into a mini skating rink. Weather and wear have been working on Tom Rowland's neighborhood for years. This is continuing to grow. Everyone from Tom to the people who spend his tax dollars agree this street needs a fresh coat of asphalt. But Echo Hill Circle keeps cracking and crumbling. Young children and senior citizens or everybody has to walk on the side of the street um, to avoid traffic and you are definitely at risk for a trip or a fall. Tom has kept five years worth of emails. In 2010, representatives of the county told him the Transportation Department anticipated resurfacing Echo Hills in the spring of 2012. It didn't happen. Two years later, the county wrote that, weather permitting, the road would be paved by the end of 2014. Why hasn't it been done? Well, it's always a matter of funding. A spokesperson for DeKalb County tells us while Echo Hills has spent more than five years on the resurfacing list, the county has no designated funding for such work. This year, there is a grant from the state. So it is on the list with some other roads that's going, that they're going to be paved this year. Can you guarantee folks out there it will be done in 2016? Yes, I can. Definitely. Yes I, yes, I can. And it's just a little perplexing to me. Tom Rowland has heard similar promises before. I mean, this particular area, like I said, has been a chronic problem for years. He's hoping the county will make some temporary repairs while he continues to wait. And we have asked DeKalb County to come in here and make some temporary repairs while we wait for the repaving. But DeKalb County tells us while they'll take a look, it is pretty tough because those temporary repairs don't last very long at all in winter weather. So, Vinny, it may be spring before we see any work out here at all. Of course, we'll be watching to make sure that DeKalb County follows through this time. Yeah, I, I just have a feeling now with you on the job, Jerry, it's going to happen. And uh, they, they really need that repaving. It's unbelievable. Commuter dude holding the powerful accountable. Yeah. Getting results. Thanks, Jerry. All right, here's an inspirational story to start your Thursday. A musician in the Atlanta Symphony is all about that bass <laughs> as she gets ready to set a world record. You guys are going to love this story. Jane Little is just 4 feet 11 inches tall, and she is 87 years old. She also plays the double bass, an instrument that is more than 6 feet tall. <laughs> Little is starting her 71st uninterrupted season, which makes her the wow. longest tenured player in the world. And she's already thinking about what's next. I've always wanted to play a bass guitar, the electric bass guitar. <laughs> How great you know, is that? Just Today's... start a little group mm, called the Grannies or something like that. <laughs> so today's Atlanta Symphony concert marks the 71st anniversary to the day of Little's first concert, which, by the way, was back in 1945. Wow. I think that concept would work. The grannies? <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. I like it a lot. I think it would work. She looks yeah, amazing, by the way. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. Now, I was just talking to somebody last night about how life doesn't end when you get to a certain age. You still got, no. as long as you're here, you got, you got a ways to go. You got things to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that's important to remember yeah. because I think a lot of people around our age start thinking, <laughs> I, I, too late. Yeah, I miss, I miss it. It's not yeah. too late. No, it's no. Not. Jay, never. Do you promise to get us some video when she starts playing the oh, right? Please. She starts she slapping the bass. That would yeah. be awesome. The granny. The granny. <laughs> I'm like the winner of the granny. I like it. All right, let's take a look. We got to uh, set you off with the radar because we do have some clouds outside, no wet weather, no rain coming out of those clouds at all. Don't have to worry about that. But in some spots, we've got mostly cloudy skies, like over here toward Athens, Social Circle, down through Jackson, over toward Peachtree City. Everywhere else is partly cloudy skies. And so we'll get the sunshine in early by the afternoon. You'll see a few more clouds moving through, but by the time you're driving home, at least, mostly sunny skies. It'll be very, very nice out there. That rain, not too far away. It's down in the central and southern portions of the state. Got more coming up. We're watching and tracking that front as it continues to push further and further away. High pressure will build in. And we'll be sitting pretty really from now through the weekend. Now, colder air is starting to push or evict into the area as well. You can see the 30s up here to the north. You've got 42 degrees in Canton, 42 also in Marietta, 44 right now in the city of Atlanta. We're looking at uh, 48 right now in Covington. And you can see where we had the 50s, those 
temperatures are starting to uh, break down again as that cold air continues to push down to the south. Now we will get the sunshine in, but don't expect it to heat up all that much today. Uh, back to normal is what we're going to call it. 53 degrees will be your high temperature. That is where we should be for this time of year. We'll give it a 10 out of a possible 11 on the wisometer. That's close, right? It's close, close enough. And we'll take it. We'll take it. We had the clouds. We've had the rain. And we had, with that, some very warm temperatures. Temperatures highs in the 60s and 70s. Now, we're saying goodbye to that, but at least we'll get the sunshine back in as that front continues to push further away from us. High pressure will build into the area. In fact, our next chance for rain really won't come until the beginning of next week. That system is way out to the west over toward uh, Seattle. It will track across the country and then bring us a chance for some rain, but it will also cool us down even more. Yeah, winter's not done yet, folks. We're not done with it. All right, so here, is, here it is, our forecast track model, and you can track along with me with the time right there at the top of the screen. It shows the clouds moving away from the area. So by the time you're driving home, here's 1.30 in the afternoon, you're looking at mostly sunny skies. Uh, by the time you're driving home tonight, we'll have uh, sunshine around. So if you don't use the shades this morning, you'll certainly use them by this afternoon. Clear skies tonight will allow those temperatures to fall down into the 30s. So it's going to be a cold start for your Friday morning, but at least we'll have the sunshine around. We'll hold on to that really for the rest of the afternoon and into the weekend. Weekend looks pretty good as well. Here it is in the seven-day outlook. We're looking at 52 degrees for the high temperature on Friday. Saturday and Sunday, both starts will be in the low 30s. So if you get up, you do that early morning jog over the weekend, you will have a cold start. 54 degrees for the high temperature both days. We'll give them a 10 on the wisometer. And then as we head into Monday, look for a 30% chance for a shower. And there could be some flurries or snow mixing in, especially in the North Georgia mountains. Not, we're not talking about a whole lot of moisture here. Again, only a 30% chance. But as we head into Tuesday, notice the temperatures will be down around 32 degrees. So it could be some frozen precipitation, again, mainly for the North Georgia mountains. That's the way it looks right now. But we'll keep you updated on this if anything changes. And then we'll clear it out by the middle of the week. Time for a check on the traffic now. Let's head over to Crash and Fred. Get the latest on the roads. Thank you so much, Chesley. Pretty quiet out there right now. That's why I want to give you a little heads up. Some ongoing construction that y'all might be dealing with if you happen to commute on what we call the Alpharetta Autobahn. This is a nightly thing here. This is Georgia 400. That's why I'm giving you a little traffic alert right here. Bridge work, 400 north and southbound between Mansell and Haynes Bridge. They're doing it nightly from about 9 p.m. till about 5 a.m. They wrap everything up. That's Monday through Friday. They're actually doing the bridge work itself, so they're not on 400, but they're replacing some of those bridges. Here is Georgia 400 at uh, Windward Parkway. These cars right here all heading south through Roswell and Alpharetta and pretty much doing the speed limit. Pretty much the same thing everywhere. But, Fred, you've got trouble down in Campbellton. Yeah, the only two cars on the road this time of the morning happen to meet each other, I'm afraid. Highway 92 south uh, on Campbellton, south of Highway 70, Cascade, Palmetto Highway is just west of Union City and Fairburn in South Fulton. Early morning wreck with injuries. Police are on the scene trying to clear this up. So if you travel through there, uh, we'll keep you updated on when that clears. Vinny, over to you. All right, thanks so much, Fred. And while temperatures are dipping back to freezing, many of us are already dreaming of a spring break vacation and some warmer weather. We'll tell you what you need to do now so you don't waste your money while booking your trip. Came in like a and guess who's coming into the voice? Like a wrecking ball, yeah, Miley Cyrus, there she is, and her tongue. Ugh. Tweeting out this picture to confirm that she'll be a key advisor during season 10. The Voice premieres in about three weeks, right here on 11 Alive, and hopefully she'll keep her clothes on, right? you high up in the sky, and now you're not coming down.
Hey, it's 526. Time to take a look at what's trending. And Nintendo is going mobile. It's launching an app next month called Miitomo. Nintendo calls it a social experience where users can create avatars to use in some of their games. Players can also chat with others who have the app. Well, we may be in the middle of winter, but travel experts say now is the best time to book your spring break trip. Booking early will ensure you get the most bang for your buck. That includes hotels, which allow you to cancel your reservation within 24 hours if you find a better deal. And when it comes to flights, book them directly and not through third-party websites and apps. God forbid something was to happen, the airline only helps those physically that bought either from a travel agent or their airline direct. Experts also say using apps like Yelp and Groupon will help you find deals on food and activities. Right now in Atlanta Live, tax troubles. The IRS's online system is still down this morning. We'll tell you what it means if you're trying to get an early start on filing your taxes. Plus, yesterday our storm trackers followed the storm as it came across Georgia this morning. We're following the latest as hundreds remain in the dark and dozens are left trying to pick up their lives.